Why don't you give me a sign? This is Corinna Jane. That leaves a trail along that shore. It's not your problem, it's mine. With her brand new single, Give Me a Sign. As featured on BBC Introducing. It's just the way it's gotta be. Corinna Jane, give me a sign. Out now. I have to know your name. It's Donna. Hello, I'm Sophia Jessica, and welcome to the fan carpet. But yeah, it's a, a pleasure to speak to you today. Damn, um, thanks. You were, you, you, you were great in the film. I, I watched it the other day you know, before I spoke to Jarrett. I thought you were great. So. Very cool, yeah. I'm glad you talked to him as well. Mm, yeah, I'm talking I'm talking to Kate later this evening as well. Lovely, yeah. Uh, that'll be Donna. Yeah, so, yeah, we'll be, oh, I think. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, I'll just jump straight in. Um, so it's wonderful to speak to you. Um, if we go back to the beginning, was there a defining moment for you to get into the entertainment industry? Oh, wow. Fully to the very beginning. Um, <laughs> I had a motor speech disorder growing up, and I thought that getting into theater would be a way to help with my speech, which it certainly did help. And yeah, I, I sort of just fell in love with acting. It wasn't so much the entertainment industry and I hadn't had an introduction to the entertainment industry at any age, um, you know, before I got into acting. Like I didn't even really think of movies as something other than entertainment. I didn't think like that's where I want to be. Um, so falling into the entertainment industry just you know comes with a great love of any career in that um so i started when i was like 11 ish so it's been quite a few years <laughs> great um great and and obviously you've got a sister in the in the industry so does that help as well um like when, when it comes to like um going up for roles and Throwing ideas of yeah, each other both my siblings. Sorry, um, both oh, my yeah, siblings, course, Alex well. and Matt. Yeah, they're you know doing so well. Um, we're all super proud of each other, and it certainly is helpful as far as like I can call them up and ask if they have any questions, and we all three can help each other with self tapes and advice on set and sort of industry advice, and that's really fun. Um, I certainly hope that no one ever, you know, hires one of us just because of another one of us. Um, mm -hmm. I think that we're industry wise sort of involved and because we're there for each other, but if anyone like wanted to hire one of us just because they know the other, that wouldn't really be very serving to the final product, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be like you're not looking for the best talent if you're just doing that. Um, but it's been pretty cool watching them come up in the industry and from a young age being involved with them. So that's fun. Yeah, you're all carving your own careers and that's nothing to, there's nothing to not be proud of. So yeah, it's wonderful. Um, so this is based on on true events that are very close to the to the director. Um, how did you did you feel a sense of responsibility when taking on the role? Of course, yeah. It's funny because being on set, everyone was. I entered after they had shot the short film, so there was like already a family of tight knit people who knew what they were making and really involved. And by the time I came on it was something that was already established. And I I think most people are personally affected by 
domestic violence to some degree. Everyone knows someone who came from that sort of background. Um, and, you know, walking onto set, everyone knew the responsibility and somehow that made it even nice. It wasn't something you had to keep reminding people of. People just were there to have you know, a good time and then focus really hard on their actual jobs, um, which is like the nicest type of set to walk into when people are really feel the responsibility of the job, you know, and feel the honor of being able to bring to life a story that's actually important to them. Um, you know, and it says so much that the movie has ended up being a partner with the National Coalition of Against um, Against Domestic Violence because that's like a really just getting the stamp of approval and having the responsibility <laughs> of changing the conversation away from something that's a little bit more stigmatized and you know hush 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 mm. is really very nice and sort of speaks to from the day one that I got involved it was already at that level where of course there was going to be involvement in places that approved of how they were creating this art which is really nice and I could feel that totally on set and one of the reasons I was so excited to audition is not just because of the subject matter but because of the script and talking to Jarrett and seeing how really it personally affected him um and how important the story was to him was really nice yeah yeah absolutely um what was it about Sybil um that made you want to play her and how did you relate to her um Sybil and her sister Paula are so funny um they're supposed to be sort of like a comedic break from all this stress right mm -hmm. but ultimately like the reason they're so funny and so sarcastic and judgmental <laughs> is because it's a coping mechanism um you know they're pretty biting i think and Sybil is just so fun. I sort of wish on everyone that level of strength and sass, right? Mm -hmm. um, I, of course, was really excited to play someone like that, someone who is entertaining and fun and fabulous, um, you know, as, the, as her coping mechanism. Rather than falling down, she fights back in this really fun way and i love that awesome um uh, how did you relate to her personally i mean i really think that personally like i have sort of some experience with the being surrounded sort of by the domestic violence do you like I understand I'm really that's really important to me um but to her specifically I think that she sort of more inspired me when I was shooting it to be a little um tougher more so than I like even <laughs> could bring myself to her it was just really fun to pull out the energy that she has, especially with the costume department being as good as it was, it was really fun. Just as soon as you put the costume on, you were like, okay, like, this is me. I'm here for it. I'm ready with this energy. Um, I think every girl can sort of, every woman can relate to that energy being in them. Awesome. Um, do you have any memories from filming uh, that will stick with you throughout your career? I really liked the location that I was shooting on was this gigantic, was so beautiful and it was crazy. Everyone was so focused on everything that was busy. And as soon as we broke for, we had like 
quick breaks throughout the day and we would go out into the garden of this place like cast or crew you know sort of in waves and just be like wow look at these plants look at the beautiful maze and the view and be right back at it um 15 minutes later which is i think that was a really nice thing because it's not often that you get sort of so many people on set taking a moment and a breather um because everyone's got to be doing something so i'm definitely gonna remember that i don't think that often happens cool um so it was kind of like a big family in a way when you were filming yeah definitely and i you know having been cast later on mm -hmm. um got to step into that family. but it really was everyone knew what they were doing and that was it they were just there to connect with everyone because that's sort of what it's all about you know did you get a chance to watch the short film as well before you took on the role yeah i did um watching that reading the script talking to jared and everything was definitely really and it is something that i think even the short film was really successful making people feel passionate about the subject and mm. feel the need to sort of change the conversation because you're watching this stuff and a lot of the time in the media you know it does get quieted or victims get judged and some people just think oh she brought this on herself or they brought this on themselves and watching the short film even and then of course the feature really lets you see how many lives and it was great. And I mean, you're going to talk to Kate later today. She, like, mm, she is, yeah. She's a revelation in the film. Um, so domestic abuse is a key theme in the film um, and it's ever present subject, especially with the last, with the virus lockdowns over the last year and a half. Uh, what message do you want viewers to take away from the film? It's interesting because I'm sure Jarrett mentioned they've been getting messages from people who were like, this movie helped me step out of my situation and be brave enough to leave. Um, but to me, the most important part is just about creating the awareness and having audiences walk away so that if and when, God forbid, they see that happen or they're in one of those circumstances or their family members or their friend is, they don't feel the need to be polite, that they know sort of what to say. They're not going to cover up or make excuses for the abuser and that they understand that they're in so many cultures for thousands of years, you know, as long as humans have been around, they've been there have been abusers and victims of domestic violence. Um, so I think it's really important just for audience to walk away feeling like it's okay to interfere with something and you should try your best not to judge and not to silence someone um, more than anything. Because I think when you're in the situation, you're, you know, really ingrained and it can be extra hard for you. And that's what makes Donna, she's so impressive person and character. Mm -hmm. um, but really for audiences to not feel shame or embarrassment about getting involved, I think is the most important thing. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, it's a good thing that she was able to see the film before she passed away. I know. I'm so happy about it. It's so beautiful. You know, she got to see the short film and got to see really how many people this affects and how it matters to so many people. And to have her story that I'm sure was painful for her mm. be a source of inspiration for others. Uh, so beautiful. Absolutely is. Um, so um, what is your preferred genre? And do you have any favorite films? <laughs> um, I kind of watch everything. 
Um, you know, I love the old movies because I sort of grew up on them. I grew up on like Betty Davis and Cary Grant. Um, you know, like old school, like Cary Grant first coming to America from England and, um, you know, his name is Archie Leach. I don't know if you know about him, but he's great. And he like came with the circus and so he's like doing acrobatics in his first few movies. Um, and you can really see that athleticism, I think in all those old movies, those, those actors are all like dancers or acrobats and have done years of that training. Um, some of those things I just love. And I used to be obsessed with Marilyn Monroe as a kid as well. So how to marry a millionaire and gentlemen prefer blondes are sort of my thing. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, what would be your dream role? You know, sort of in the same vein, I'd like something that demands that physicality from me. Um, I love a lot of the roles that I've played, you know, strong women, funny women, something that combined it all. I don't have a favorite genre and I don't have like specific dreams, just anything that I can feel free to bring to life. Can I get your teeth into? Yeah, exactly. Awesome. So as an actress, um, are there any other aspects of the entertainment industry that you'd like to pursue? You know, I've thought about pursuing writing and producing, and I do like it. It's just not exactly where my passions lie. I think further down my career, I might be more interested in something else. Um, and I have such a curiosity about, you know, the most impressive people on set are very often the crew. And, you know, the lighting department and sound department and camera department are so amazing to me. I've always been interested in the technological aspect of creating this art. You know, they really sell, they can really sell a performance even when it's not necessarily there. Um, but they're just so great and make such beautiful stuff. I'd really love to at least learn a little bit more about that side of it. Although I don't know that really it's a place that I belong. I think some people are just so naturally talented in that field and have the passion and drive and obsession that it needs. Um, so really, I'm just gonna be, I'm gonna stay in the acting section for a little while. Awesome, yeah, can't wait, can't wait to see what you do next. Um, so who, who inspires you in the industry? Um, I think my siblings, but it's less so about individual people and more about performances that I see. You know, mm -hmm. I love, I mean, of course, with COVID, I haven't been able to see very much theater the past few years, um, but I love going to theater and watching just how impressive actors are and just constantly aspiring to the next level you know so i'll watch all these great tv shows and just rewatch scenes um and practice them and sort of say them aloud to myself and reading plays and getting and you know inspired that way um that's really where it all comes from and it's it's from stories it's from people it's it's not about individuals in the industry for me I know for some people, they're like, I want the career of this person and I'm obsessed with this person and they're the most talented person I've ever seen in my life. But I mean, you can see behind me, it's all plays. <laughs> they're all yeah. plays. Yeah. So, awesome. And I have more over there. I'm just, stories are what inspire me to go on, yeah. Wonderful, that's awesome. Um, so with the popularity of streaming services like Netflix and then being the, the lifeblood for the last year and a half, uh, what do you think the future of cinema is? Ooh, okay. So <laughs> I am obsessed with 3D right now and virtual reality. Okay. And I have I have the Oculus, not to like do a product placement thing with you. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I'm obsessed with it. And some of the films that I've seen in virtual reality have been unreal. Ah, oh, 
and it allows you to interact with it in a interesting way because it's more than theater and more than film you mm -hmm. know it's not 2d and it's it's so crazy um and in the same way, you know, I think a lot of people now are taking video games much more seriously. And I'll be playing a video game and just sobbing, like just sobbing. <laughs> um, and laughing along with the characters and stuff. And I think that people are really craving that interaction. Um, and I think that the more film allows itself to get inspired by the things that people can interact with more, I think the more film is really gonna succeed. Um, not that it's not succeeding already, mm -hmm. but um, taking inspiration from those long stories and you know, the best part of these free world, open world games is all these little characters, these side characters and that set up the, the world that help develop it. And you get really, really invested in these random people you meet in basements and these random people walking down the street um, in these video games. And I think a lot, of a lot of times I watch movies and I'm like, okay, so there's five people in this world. This is the whole world that exists. There's no one else. Um, but I love to see really the world get super, super developed. And I see more of that happening now. Um, and that's really the way that I think it's gonna go. Awesome. Have you had a chance to play any of the interactive ga interactive films? The interactive, sorry, what? Interactive films. Um, there's a company called Wales Interactive and Good Gate Media. They've uh, made, um, I think it's three at the moment because I've interviewed the directors for it and, and the cast as well. So there was The Complex and then First Dates. No, Five Dates, sorry. Um, and then, uh, and the current one is Nightbook, um, and they're no, like I they're haven't. like they're like a choose your own adventure type uh, type type uh, game and film. I'm gonna write that down just because I haven't. Yeah, cool. Go for it. Um, Wales Interactive. I been able to play with it. I love that stuff, mm. and especially now, like I've been trying to get more into voiceover stuff. And I have friends who are doing lots of amazing voiceover stuff and podcast animation, all that stuff. You really don't even, sometimes just visual or sometimes just audio mm -hmm. are all you need. Um, I will definitely check that out. That sounds cool. Uh, you can play it on console um, as well as PC and, and Mac. Uh, with PC also like Xbox or, or yeah, yeah. You can play it on, yeah I think you can play on an Xbox uh, but I use Steam when I play them on my Mac okay cool uh, so yeah. yeah it works on there awesome uh, I love yeah. that but yeah they're, they're, they're great great ones to play um, or watch I still haven't worked out what the terminology is yet um, because it's, a, it's, a, it's an interactive film so you're playing it but it's still a film, so you're watching what the outcome is. So I think it's a bit of both. But um, it's nice to feel like you have a hand in it somehow. You get you get mm. some sort of decision making. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's like those old choose your own adventure books um, uh, from when I was a kid. Um, so, yeah, I love those. Yeah, yeah. so good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so what are you hoping audience will will take away from Donna when they get to see it? I hope that audiences feel they can feel inspired to step in when they see domestic violence happening yeah yeah and, and if it is happening know that there is help out there um, exactly um mm. lots, lots of steps of you can take and lots of people that really care about it um it's such a shame that uh, there's so much domestic violence that's happening. And in many cases, it's just ingrained in our cultures. Um, but I hope that people now start to question that, especially after watching this. Mm, absolutely. Um, are there any projects that you're looking forward to getting back to? Yeah, I have a couple really exciting projects. Um, 
that sort of got delayed due to COVID, but I'm hoping this fall pick back, pick back up. Um, and I have another movie that's coming out pretty soon that I'm excited for people to see because it's another fun character, um, like Sybil, but she's much preppier. Okay, what's the, what's the film? Um, it's called My Best Friend Dead. They changed the title recently. So I had to think about that for a second. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just another film I, I did with my pals, Bruce Wimple at 377. Um, yeah, I have, what, you know, once you work with some people, you just sort of work with them forever. Yeah, um, this one's really fun. It's a, a monster movie, but it doesn't feel typically like a monster movie. It's really about a bunch of girlfriends just hanging okay. out it's so funny um but yeah i hope i hope donna i hope a lot of people watch it and you know it comes out internationally now itunes um on tomorrow oh my god tomorrow yeah donna's out tomorrow yeah it's gonna be awesome so, well i've already seen it so yeah i got sent i got i i was one of the privileged ones to get sent a screen link so um, on, I think it was on Vimeo. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, so where can we, where, where can we find you online to keep up with you? Where, um, where just at Instagram, really, <laughs> at Cat Dodario, C A T Dodario. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't have a lot of social media. <laughs> it gets to be a lot. Yeah, it does. That's why I've got someone else do it, doing it for the company. <laughs> perfect yeah i love uh being sometimes i like to be a consumer of it but generally i'm out there living life i don't know i yeah. don't know i like to i like to keep up to date with what we're doing but other than that i'm not on tiktok or anything but it'd be cool um where are you at oh the, just the fan carpet everywhere okay yeah everywhere. everywhere the fan carpet and the website is the fan .com. so uh, once the interview goes live i'll send a link great but yeah uh, but this has been wonderful so thank you so much for taking time yeah, to thank speak you. To me today um and congratulations for the film and good luck with the rest of your career um thank you. i know you're going to be great you. i know you're going to be great so thanks for, so thanks very much and take care bye look after yourself bye Thank you for watching The Fan Carpet. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for more content next time. Women gotta be stronger than pretty. You look like a warrior to me. the largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca. With the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels, it's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you around Mallorca. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.